Okay, good morning. Uh, so I'm Christophe uh, Cornu from UNESCO, working in the section of health and education. So first of all, uh, thank you very much for all of you who woke up uh, very early to be here at 8.15. It's really nice that there's uh, already uh, quite a number of people here for this very important session um, organized by uh, UNESCO. So I'm going to explain first uh, why UNESCO decided to organize this session, and then I will introduce the researchers who will uh, present the findings of uh, this literature review we commissioned. So last year, when we developed the, this report, I presented a couple of days ago behind the numbers ending school violence and bullying, we decided to pay a lot of attention to um, vulnerable populations of uh, students and to factors that make students vulnerable to bullying. And we got uh, some data on migration from um, a couple of global surveys, because as I explained before, we use mostly data from international surveys for this report. So we got some data from the HBSC and from PISA, but uh, we found that the data was a bit sketchy and that it failed uh, answering questions about a very complex uh, phenomenon. As you know, uh, migration is a global uh, phenomenon, not just uh, in the north, uh, in many countries and many regions, and it's a very sensitive issue. And when it comes to sensitive <coughs> issues, sometimes it's more ideology than evidence. So we really wanted to get responses on a series of uh, issues related to bullying and migration and we decided to commission a review of the existing literature. And the lucky researchers who were selected to conduct the literature review are here. It's a team of uh, three researchers, uh, Dr. Dagmar Strommeyer. So uh, Dagmar Strommeyer, I know that some of you, many of you know her, uh, is a professor at the University of the Applied Sciences, Upper Austria, Linz. And uh, she has a PhD in psychology from the University of Vienna. And uh, she studies positive development in youth with a cross-national perspective and a special focus on, on migration, which is one of the reasons why she was selected for uh, conducting this literature review. And she developed, implemented, and evaluated a program to foster uh, social and intercultural competencies in schools that was implemented in several countries, including Austria, Cyprus, Romania, Turkey, and Kosovo. The second uh, member of the team is uh, Professor um, Dr. Simona Caravita. Uh, she's an associate professor of development and educational psychology as the, at the Catholic University of the Sacred Heart in Italy. And you realize some of the first uh, studies on uh, ethnic bullying involving immigrants in Italy. And uh, you're currently the principal investigator for a national project aiming at developing evidence-based uh, interventions to tackle ethnic bullying, which is funded by the Ministry of Education in Italy. And finally, we have here with us Professor uh, Dr. Hildegun Fandrum, from the, uh, you, she's a professor at the Norwegian Center for Learning Environment and Behavioral Research in Education at the University of Stavanger, Norway, in Norway. And uh, you've been doing a lot of work in the field of education, bullying, and immigrants, and you are currently the vice chair of the European uh, Cost Network on Migration, Inclusion, and bullying in schools. So you're really the top researchers for uh, this issue. So what we ask the researchers, we ask them like some very simple questions. First of all, we ask them to respond this question because you know that UNESCO is working with policymakers, and policymakers want um, responses, let's say, simple. They want things they can understand. So we ask them to answer the, 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 uh, the, to answer the question, what are we really talking about when we're talking about migration and bullying? What is it? What, what are we talking about when we refer to immigrant students? Second question we ask is, 
what is the prevalence? Are immigrant students really uh, more likely to be bullied than non-immigrant students? Third question, we ask them, what are the factors that influence um, bullying, uh, targeting immigrant students? And finally, we ask the questions about effective interventions. So we're going to have um, three presentations, and we have questions at the end of the three presentations. And we're going to start with uh, Professor Dagmar Schremeyer. And uh, Professor Dagmar Schremeyer will start presenting, uh, the, the, first of all, the concepts, the definitions, and then the findings on the nature and the scope of bullying targeting immigrant students. So please, the floor okay. is yours. Thank you very much. Mm. It's a big honor for me to be here. So I go to my desk. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy <coughs> to present this uh, systematic review to you. So our task was to systematically review the available empirical evidence that was conducted on bullying and migration. So actually sounds like a very simple task, but turned out to be quite complex. And then the second part uh, that will be presented by Simona is uh, that we will uh, also uh, speak about influencing factors of bullying related to migration. And the last, and for policymakers and for children, of course, the most important part is the question how to respond to bullying in relation to migration. Uh, I need also to acknowledge that we have that we had a fourth uh, member in the team, uh, Elisabeth Stefanek. She is my colleague from Austria. She helped us so much with the review, but of course, it was not possible for her to be here today. But uh, without her, for sure, we could not have conducted this review. Um, I would like to start my uh, presentation with some important reflections on the concepts. So, of course, we all need to think about what is migration and what is multiculturalism? How do we define these uh, quite, uh, quite common uh, things? And in my opinion, it's very good to go back to the roots of the meaning of the word migrare. So maybe most of you know that migrare is Latin. And the, the meaning of this word is movement. So actually, a migrant is a person who moved. And usually in, the, in, the, in this time, it's a person who internationally moved. But of course, the migrants are very uh, complex group. So there are so, so many types of migrations. So I personally think it is better to speak in the plural of the pheno phenomenon than, than in the singular because migration captures a very a big variety of different uh, life experiences. So, of course, it's possible that people move uh, within one country. For instance, I'm a national migrant. I moved from Graz to Vienna and then to Linz. That's maybe something else than if a person moved from Turkey to Austria or a person moved from Zambia to Italy. This person would be an international migrant. I think, especially nowadays, it's, it's extremely important to also think about the cause, the motive of the migration. It makes a very big difference whether my migration was voluntary. So I am the actor, I am the agent who decided to go somewhere else, maybe because of work, of study, maybe because of love, of my relationship. Uh, ships or whether it is involuntary. So a quite a big group of people in the whole world and of course also in Europe, in Austria, are involuntary migrants because they are refugees and they are uh, seeking asylum. I think these people are a, a different group and of course it would be necessary that also our studies um, divide these uh, people. Then, of course, especially if we speak about schools and children, that is the focus of our review, uh, we need to, dis, uh, to distinguish first and second generation immigrants. So a first generation immigrant actually is a true immigrant because he or she really moved. 
but um, unfortunately people, even if they didn't move themselves, they still uh, keep immigrants because of their parents and those children are the second generation immigrants. This is also maybe a little bit unfair if we go back to the, the meaning of the word because a second generation immigrant of course never moved but of course he or she was born or raised in an immigrant family and sometimes even in a bicultural family. So to summarize, uh, to make a very complex topic short, migration is a complex social phenomenon and it's not uh, very good to put all the immigrants in one group because for sure we will overlook extremely important life experiences of these people. The last concept that I shortly want to discuss uh, here is the thing with multiculturalism. There is a lot of discussion about the proper term. Should we say multiculturalism, transculturalism, interculturalism, uh, diversity, maybe some people prefer diversity as a term. So I think no matter how we term the phenomenon, it's, a, it's, a, it's for sure clear that nowadays in Europe and in many other countries in the world, we have contact situations where people who are heterogeneous based on very many characteristics are studying together, are living together, and uh, therefore the relationships need to be managed. So in my uh, perspective, uh, multiculturalism is uh, a situation where different people regarding maybe cultures, languages, ethnicities, religions, worldviews, and so on and so forth uh, are together. Uh, okay, so after reflecting a little bit about the complex topic of migration and multiculturalism, the next complexity is when we combine migration with the topic of bullying. I'm sure everybody of you knows the concept of bullying. This is the World Bullying Conference, so I, there is no need to define bullying in this audience. So I. I'm sure you are familiar with the definition, but when it comes to migration, again, it gets extremely complex because we, we need to think, what is the thing uh, we are investigating in our studies? Is this the thing that we directly ask children? Uh, so we ask them for their direct perceptions. Is this uh, that we ask the children to attribute their perceived uh, or their actual victimization to some group characteristics? Or is it just that we post hoc split children according to some characteristics and we as researcher then uh, to say, okay, maybe the first generation immigrants have, uh, are more involved in bullying than for instance the non-immigrants. So I think these uh, methodological questions, they lead to very different results and it's really important to distinguish these kind of things when you uh, read the studies and maybe even more details. Uh, racist, bias-based, stigma-based, identity-based forms of bullying is the usual term in the literature and already here when you read these many kind of terms you see that again we have a very complex uh, research field. Uh, like with all bullying studies, also in this kind of studies, we, have, uh, we are faced with several methodological challenges. So for my research topic, of course, the definition of groups is extremely important. Do I put all the immigrants in one group or am I able to split them according to several important characteristics? What kind of concepts do I measure? And of course, how do I measure these concepts with self-assessments, with teacher perceptions, with peer, peer ratings, and so forth and so on. Of course, always when it comes to prevalence rates, we have the challenge of the cutoff scores, which cutoff scores are used, lenient cutoff scores, where children who are now and then bullied are already in the bullied group, or more strict cutoff scores. So to summarize, the research topic is very complex and we did our best in this uh, review to uh, make sure that uh, all these uh, important um, things are not overlooked so that we are very clear what we, we are talking about. 
So um, for this review, uh, the first important step was to identify the relevant literature. So we screened uh, the relevant literature and um, with the screening alone, we, can, we ended uh, close to 1,000 studies. So actually there is a lot of studies conducted on this topic. But when you closer look uh, these studies, we were able to identify 106 studies that we closer examined. And only 30 of these studies uh, provided um, information regarding prevalence rates or mean level differences. So uh, only, let's say, one third of the studies really compare groups of, of children. And the other studies, they were like, uh, systematic reviews or theoretical papers. I would like uh, now to summarize the results uh, of the studies regarding prevalence rates. So as I told you, we found 30 studies where we were able to find uh, prevalence rates. And uh, most of the studies um, were research projects. So these are just studies done by some researchers, so 14. But there were also some studies uh, reanalyzing the health behavior of school-age children data. There was one study that analyzed the PISA data, and also some studies uh, used subsamples from national studies. Uh, again, uh, there is a heterogeneity uh, in these studies uh, regarding the age of the children, regarding the definition of immigrants, regarding the sample sizes, regarding the countries where the studies were conducted, and also regarding the percentage of immigrants in the sample. So I would really say it's extremely hard to draw any kind of conclusion regarding the topic of bullying and migration because the research base is really very heterogeneous. Nevertheless, of course, there are some studies that we trust more than others. Uh, for instance, uh, there, is a very, there are two very important meta-analyses. Uh, they were conducted um, until 2016. The, the studies were covered until 2016. And uh, the one meta-analysis on bullying found out that immigrant status was not a moderator, so it was not related to a bullying perpetration. There was the other meta-analysis on victim victimization. Unfortunately, here immigrants were not uh, differentiated, but again, there were no differences. So based on this meta-analysis, we can conclude that uh, immigrant status per se is maybe not a risk factor. So as I told you at, in the beginning, the story is maybe much more complex uh, than just saying immigrant children are at risk everywhere and in every context, in every country and in every school. But of course, there are also other studies that we, not, that we cannot neglect, and these are the big international studies, health behavior of school-age children data. And uh, there is one um, analysis that is also reported in the UNESCO report, <coughs> in the recently published one, and here there was a clear a trend that immigrant students are more likely to be bullied. So in, according to this data, immigrant status was a risk for being bullied um, uh, compared to non-immigrants. So the percentage was 33% versus 26%. It was also shown in this report that immigrant children are more likely to experience cyberbullying and uh, also, that is, I think, quite uh, important, and we need to investigate this in more depth. Uh, there were differences between countries. Um, also, subgroup analyses were conducted. Unfortunately, not very many, but at least with a very big data set. And uh, here in the PISA study, it was found that the timing of the immigration was a very important variable. So. Um, uh, immigrants who arrived between the age uh, zero as newborns and 12 years uh, were not as much as risk as the ones who arrived later. So arriving as an adolescent in a new country is uh, maybe puts these children at risk for being the targets of bullying. Uh, and also um, in this study, the two generations did not consistently differ 
uh, as of first generation uh, immigrants were not consistently uh, more bullied than second generation immigrants. But um, in some countries, uh, this was the case. So from an acculturation perspective, of course, it's expected that the first generation immigrants would uh, suffer more. But again, also this finding was not consistently found. Last, uh, we also checked uh, interaction effects. So here, the question is whether the uh, relation between migration and bullying is moderated by age or maybe moderated by gender. Regarding age, uh, there was an 11 country health behavior of school aged children reanalysis, and there is no indication that the developmental pattern, uh, that bullying uh, decreases over time, is different between the immigrants and the non-immigrants. So it was suggested that uh, the concept of bullying is rather a developmental than an acculturative phenomenon. But regarding gender, again, the evidence is much more controversial. So there are several studies that show no differences, but of course there are also some studies, especially from my friend Hildegun from Norway, they show that immigrant boys are at higher risk. So definitely there is a need to uh, have even better data to see what's going on. Also contextual variables are important. And uh, in the studies, in these 30 studies, very many different uh, contextual variables were collected. So many studies consider structural variables Maybe most important is the proportion of uh, immigrant children in the classroom or the classroom ethnic diversity. So these are the very important markers. Then also climate, class climate, school climate variables were, were collected. And of course also some countries considered country level variables. For instance, the MIPEX index, that's an integration index and it was uh, looked whether this uh, integration policy had an impact on the immigrant children uh, school bullying. But what can be said overall that uh, contextual variables only rarely moderated the association between immigrant status and bullying. So again, the literature is unfortunately not very consistent, but um, there is some indication that the that the percentage of immigrants in a classroom uh, is the kind of most important variable. So there are some studies indicating that in classes where there are many immigrants, both the non-immigrants and the immigrants have uh, higher levels of bullying and uh, the immigrants lower levels of victimization. But uh, there was also uh, one study showing an interaction effect that this uh, uh, immigrant uh, percentage was stronger related to the bullying of the immigrants versus the non-immigrants. So um, to summarize, I would say it's, we are not in the position at this moment to, clear, to draw clear conclusions. We do not have the good enough data sets that are convincing enough and consistent enough to say uh, something conclusive. But for sure, it would be extremely important to have more representative cross-national cross studies on this topic. So maybe this is a very important policy message. Please fund more international uh, representative uh, studies. And in these studies, of course, it would be extremely necessary to also collect information to be able to split the immigrants. So it's not enough to just ask the country of birth of the parents and the country of birth of the child. So there are several other important variables. And after we have collected this data, we could make much better age and gender related analysis and of course also contextual variables. So that would be the best to do in the future to have a better data set, much stronger data set to answer the questions that we should have answered in our review. Thank you Thank very you. much, uh, Professor Schremeyer, for this first uh, presentation on the key findings of the review, especially uh, trying to describe the complexity of the phenomenon and the complexity of doing research on bullying and migration. And without further ado, we're going to listen to Professor Simona Caravita, who is going now to 
explore, well, to present the findings in, on the, the, the factors that influence bullying. And I will ask you to keep to the time because we have only uh, half an hour left and I would like to have some time also for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here today and uh, to explain what we found uh, about uh, uh, the processes and mechanisms uh, that influence uh, the bullying invo involving immigrants. The literature uh, indicates uh, that we can find processes influencing this kind of bullying at uh, three levels uh, of uh, a systemic uh, uh, understanding of the context. We can find uh, processes at the individual level, at the peer group level, and the society level. At the individual level, the literature indicated that stereotypes, prejudices, moral disengagement processes, and emotional processes, and their culturation stress are influential. Looking a bit more in details at each on of these processes, we found that stereotypes are influential. Stereotypes are the cognitive representations that people share about habits and characteristics of specific ethnic groups. And stereotypes are important in explaining bullying involving immigrants because there are studies indicating that when a child of a minority, of a minority group uh, is uh, showing behaviors or characteristics uh, that deviate from uh, the stereotypical behaviors of, of, the, of their own uh, ethnic group, this factor can trigger both intra ethnic bullying and inter-ethnic bullying. So it means that when a child is showing some characteristics against the stereotypical behavior or expectations about ethnic group, he can be victimized also from members of their own same ethnic group and also from members of other ethnic groups and the majority group. Uh, this uh, is interesting because uh, uh, the literature also has developed uh, recently uh, a theory of deviance. So there were some studies uh, uh, both, uh, based on the both quantitative and qualitative studies showing that uh, in uh, youth's view, when uh, a child uh, is uh, devi deviating uh, from uh, peer group uh, norms, uh, expectations uh, of peers, uh, that uh, can uh, explain uh, the bullying behavior. So Yoss thinks uh, that uh, when uh, a child is bullied, is bullied because it uh, is in some way perceived as a deviant, uh, deviant from uh, the expectations that peers have. But uh, when uh, we are looking and applying uh, this theory of devi deviance uh, to the uh, bullying involving immigrants, uh, we found uh, that uh, in the case uh, of immigrant peers and uh, of uh, uh, mem minority group members, what uh, is perceived as deviance is uh, the fact that they have, uh, they have some habits, uh, but also physical characteristics that are specific of their own ethnic groups. So the deviance, perceived deviance from peers, by peers is uh, related in the case of immigrant uh, youths or minority group members, is related to their own ethnic belonging. This is, uh, of course, uh, is a uh, very relevant risk factors that uh, we uh, need also to consider also for the socialization processes that we, uh, we consider later. Prejudices are also influential. Prejudices can be more influential in explaining bullying involving immigrants and having immigrants as victims, more influential than this, the peer status. We know that bullying is uh, very often triggered by the wish of children to have a relevant, popular, powerful status among peers. There are some studies showing that in the case of bullying involving immigrants and having immigrants as victims, bullying is more triggered by prejudices than having a powerful status among peers. Also, at the individual level, uh, there are the moral disengagement processes and the humanization processes uh, uh, that are acting. There, are, there were several sessions about moral disengagement processes in this conference, so I will not explain this mechanism in the details, that, but uh, moral me disengagement uh, mechanisms are uh, uh, cognitive thinking about uh, what is happening about uh, the victims of bullying behavior that are used by children to self-justify 
the bullying behavior specifically against some specific targets to avoid the guilt feelings. So what was found in the literature is that moral disengagement also works uh, in uh, bullying related to um, involving immigrants. What was found is that both native-born children and immigrant peers were uh, feeling less um, guilt feelings uh, when uh, the victim of the bullying behavior was an immigrant. It was uh, really uh, very also scary and uh, that the fact that uh, not only the native born, the majority group members uh, were using less moral disengagement processes because probably they were thinking that the bullying behavior against an immigrant is something normative and acceptable. But also the minority group members, the immigrant children, we are accepting more and feeling less guilty uh, when uh, uh, the bullying behavior was targeting an immigrant peer, probably because that they were adapting some way to the majority group expectations. And also, in some studies was found that observers of bullying episodes showed a greater empathic concern when the victim was from their own same ethnic group and the bully was from a different ethnic group. So also the uh, empathic feelings uh, were influenced by the uh, belonging of the victim to the ethnic group of the observer. In, about the emotional mechanism, uh, the literature shows that uh, the strain uh, subsequent of being, uh, from being victimized uh, can uh, be more uh, triggering of the bullying uh, behavior for immigrants than for the native born. So uh, what happens is that uh, immigrant peers uh, who are victimized uh, feel have a, 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 have a higher strain uh, subsequent to, to being victimized. And and that can also favor their own bullying behavior. And there is also the acculturation process. Acculturation process by itself is a protective factor because it can be understood as a two-way change of minority and majority groups to adapt each other. But the acculturation process can also be uh, joined by uh, the acculturation stress. And the acculturation stress can increase the risk of bullying for immigrants who are also victimized. Also, when uh, we have not an acculturation process, but an assimilation process, uh, that is an ad uh, the unidirectional adaptations made, made by minority members uh, to adapt to the host context, the assimilation can increase uh, the violence among minority youths. And also the acculturation process, and it was found by Hildegun Fendram, uh, also the acculturation process can uh, be joined to the need, a need of immigrants to be uh, accepted by others, but this uh, wish for affiliation in the case of immigrants can also trigger a bullying behavior, especially in first generation immigrants and in immigrant boys. If we are moving now from uh, the individual level to the peer group level, school, classroom, and ethnic composition, but also the status among peers and the school climate and beliefs uh, within the peer groups uh, were influential on bullying involving immigrants. Specifically, as uh, was told uh, by Professor Strohmeyer, uh, there, there are not consistent results in the literature about uh, um, the influence of uh, the ethnic composition of the classroom and the school on the bullying behavior. But some studies suggest that uh, in uh, schools and classrooms uh, with, uh, that have a uh, high uh, percentage of ethnic minority students, uh, we can find uh, a higher rates of victimizations. But the literature also suggests that attitudes shared by peers are influential on this mechanism because the risk of being victimized increases when uh, classmates uh, share more negative attitudes uh, towards the ethnic group, uh, the minority ethnic group uh, of uh, um, the victim, and they share more positive attitudes uh, towards their own, uh, victim, their own uh, ethnic group. 
Also, uh, it, it uh, agrees uh, with uh, the, find the, the idea, the theorization of the theory of device, because the literature indicates that the most uh, the immigrant peers come from a country that is far from the hosting country, the, most, the more uh, increases the, the risk of being victimized increases. And uh, uh, it agrees with the theory of deviance, suggesting uh, that uh, the in uh, uh, being uh, perceived as different from the majority groups for ethnic uh, behaviors uh, is a risk factor. And uh, this uh, risk decreases when the schools are more multi-ethnic, because in the, the multi-ethnic schools, of course, uh, the norms, the peer group, group norms, that are the informal norms, the informal expectations about habits and uh, behaviors can be more tolerant of difference uh, related to uh, ethnic uh, behaviors and attitudes. We, if we're looking about the status among peers, the literature indicates that unfortunately immigrants and minority group members can experience lower status among peers uh, when we're considering the status of being well-liked or being accepted by classmates. And uh, having a low status as a well-liked peer also is a risk factor to be victimized, for being victimized. And again, school climate and beliefs uh, can play a role because uh, when uh, uh, the youths uh, perceive that their own classmates uh, are little supportive, the tension among uh, ethnic group, different ethnic groups at schools uh, can uh, increase. Also, uh, when uh, youths are surrounded by prejudiced classmates, the likelihood of ethnic harassment increases and also the supporting of the bullying behavior increases. That is also a very scary uh, process because uh, when uh, peers uh, have, uh, have, have classmates that have negative attitudes and uh, are less supportive or are, are using also moral disengagement processes to justify bullying against <laughs> Guns. Not only the perpetration of bullying increases, but the support, the passive and active support of peers to the bullying process increases. At the society level, we found also uh, that the literature indicates that there are socialization processes in which adults are involved. And uh, these socialization processes can increase the, the risk of uh, bullying against immigrants or at least involving immigrants. These uh, socialization processes can be found at the um, level of uh, close adults, family, relatives, uh, and also teachers, but at the level also of the community and mass media. At the level of, at the level of adults uh, and uh, um, close adults, uh, teachers and relatives, uh, what was found uh, is uh, uh, that uh, also in interviews of youth, so in qualitative data, and some studies using qualitative data, youth say, youth says that um, their own adults are sharing negative attitudes and are contributing, also teachers are contributing to stigmatizing some students on the basis of their immigrant origin and spreading prejudices. And it means that already in the context of family and school, children can learn the prejudices and the stereotypes that we know now from the previous slides and the other studies that can trigger bullying involving immigrants and uh, uh, having uh, as victims minority group members. At the level of the community and mass media, unfortunately, uh, the increasing flux of immigrants seems to uh, increase also in the communities some uh, um, symbolic treats that are perceived from people for, from arriving of uh, arrival of immigrants. And uh, this process promotes uh, also the society level and the mass media level promotes also spreading prejudices against immigrants. And when these prejudices arrive, uh, to uh, the youth people, it increase, uh, this increases also the possibility of bullying involving immigrants. 
If we try to summarize some of uh, uh, the results of the literature about the process influencing bullying involving immigrants, uh, we can try to answer these questions. Uh, where do the power imbalance that is very typical of the bullying processes uh, and where are the difference uh, among uh, traditional bullying, more general bullying uh, involved in uh, uh, bullying involving immigrants lays? So where we can find the difference between the general bullying and the bullying involving immigrants. If we are considering uh, more traditional uh, bullying, the literature is consistent uh, in showing uh, that it's triggered by the need to obtain a, po a powerful, a popular status among peers. And uh, the specific characteristics of the victims, uh, they are not really important. It's more important the fact that uh, the victim is perceived as deviant, different uh, from uh, uh, the expectations of peers and the uh, peer group norms that are very informal behaviors. And uh, uh, the difference lies also in very small things. So in the traditional bullying, the imbalance of power seems to lay at the peer level. And the difference is something perceived. But what happens when uh, uh, we are moving to the bullying involving immigrants? The literature showed that in bullying involving immigrants uh, is much more important the prejudices uh, and the stereotypes. They are much more important uh, even compared to having a powerful status among peers. So bullying against uh, immigrants or involving immigrants and other ethnic, uh, group, ethnic group members, this, in this type of bullying, prejudices are, uh, and the stereotypes and society expectations are the most important thing. And uh, the difference of the victim, uh, the reason for which the child uh, the, who is victimized is perceived different from children, yes, uh, again lays this difference in something perceived, but also related to ethnic characteristics. Because the literature showed that if you are having, uh, we are showing uh, ethnic uh, um, habits uh, that are more specific of your ethnic group and you are a minority mm. group, uh, this triggers the bullying involving immigrants. So in this type of bullying, the imbalance of power lays, uh, of course, at the peer level, at the individual level, but at the society level. And the difference, uh, the reason for which uh, a child of a minority group, of minority group is perceived as a uh, different and is victimized, the difference is also related to, to the fact that that child belongs to that specific ethnic group. And uh, socialization processes of adults are influential. And it, I think, uh, of course, uh, we will uh, discuss that uh, later, but I think that it uh, is very important uh, for the interventions. Gaps in the literature uh, lay only for uh, these uh, processes on the effects uh, of peer norms. We need to, know, underst to understand something more about uh, these processes at the peer level. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we need to understand a bit more processes related to the cognitive and uh, distortions and prejudices. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I mean, on behalf of UNESCO, I really want to thank you for the, the, the depth and quality of this analysis. I have to say that when we received the first draft of the literature review, we told them, hmm, that's interesting, but we don't, we're not sure we understand everything. Can you make it a bit simple so that it isn't just understandable by people who don't have uh, free PhDs? And I really, uh, think that you you got you, you did a good job because this is fascinating. So thank you, thanks a lot. And now we're going to hear the, the third presentation about the, these key findings. And now uh, Professor Hilde Gunfandrem is going to answer the question: Are they uh, effective interventions to address uh, bullying uh, targeting immigrant students? And uh, Professor Fandrem is going to also summarize recommendations, recommendations in terms of uh, how to address uh, gaps in interventions and gaps in the research. Please. Thank you. I'm also very happy to be here and to be part of this session, I have to say. So first, two very important perspectives to emphasize. The bioecological perspective and the developmental integral perspective. Taking uh, a biological perspective, 
Bullying incidents unfold in social context which are not only constituted by single individuals such as the bully or the victim, but also by the interaction of peers and adults and the wider surroundings. I, I think this has been em emphasized in several presentations in this conference. So it is therefore important that anti-bullying efforts target the whole system, aiming for a supportive and respectful school climate where students can feel safe and secure. So this is best done by the so-called whole school approach, where school educators and students are committed to creating a bullying resistant culture or climate. <clears throat> Uh, prior bullying prevention programs have focused on preventing aggressive behavior and increasing bystander intervention norms uh, only, but however, the develop developmental intergroup framework suggests that cultivating norms that promote diversity and inclusion together with anti-bullying norms may strengthen bullying prevention in multicultural settings. So, besides promoting moral principle against bullying, one important aspect on the individual and group level is to focus on immigrant boys' experiences of affiliation or belonging, to prevent them from using bullying as strategy to integrate into a peer group or to separate from those they don't want to be affiliated with in the group or in the class. On the class and school level, school leaders should employ high-level intercultural education practices so that teachers should regularly engage students in discussions about various sociocultural groups, highlighting commonalities across groups while also building norms of respect for group differences. Moreover, in preventing efforts that utilize intercultural education approaches, students should be learned about how diversity function, including discrimination, stereotyping, and how those processes might manifest in bullying and also bystander behavior. The fourth point here, youth should also be taught how power dynamics in bullying emerge across multiple levels in the school ecology. Individuals are not simply victimized based on their individual characteristics, but also based on norms and power hierarchy present in the school and in the larger society. Finally, yet importantly, findings, especially from the US, highlight the critical, critical nature of school-parent relationships in addressing student, family and cultural factors that influence the successful implementation of bullying and prevention programs. <clears throat> we have seen in some young people, bullying is associated with high levels of prejudice, towards other ethnic group, uh, while in some other students uh, bullying may be goal-oriented behavior aimed at acquiring and maintaining high popular status or affiliation and acceptance. In order to address the latter group of bullies successfully, intervention programs should be aimed to improve social competence in order to teach alternative way ways to achieve popularity, affiliation and acceptance among peers and to, to promote rewarding defending in place of bullying among bystanders. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, in addition, uh, we need to refocus existing anti-bullying intervention efforts in order to give a greater consideration to prejudice, and stereotypes and self-justification. The individualistic or social group assumption underpinning bullying problems need to be challenged by wider macro systematic, systematic factors that point to that bullying is not only problems between individuals and groups, but may be expression of wider intercultural problems. Yep. On the, uh, of the 20 anti-bullying interventions identified when reviewing racist, bias, stigma or identity-based interventions, whatever you would like to call it, performed in the literature published between 2000 and 2015, only one addressed stigma related to ethnicity and race. Uh, and they addressed instead bullying in general. Very few considered actions at the level of the larger community. For example, 
policy to contrast stigma, and very few were evidence-based. Prevention and interventions on stigma, bias, identity-based bullying should be adapted and developed considering culture and context specificities. The role of prejudice, stereotypes, and intergroup, outgroup cognitive processes need to be carefully considered in developing anti-bullying interventions, addressing bullying among and towards immigrant and ethnic minority members, group members. In order to contrast prejudice and stigmas, action based on the principle of strengthening contact among social groups seems to be most effective. These actions can reduce anxiety toward other groups and increase empathic emotion toward, towards other group members. So, gaps in the literature. More studies are needed to rigorously examine the effect of intercultural education approaches on different forms of bullying and victimization. More studies are needed that rigorously examine the effectiveness of evidence-based anti-bullying programs in different immigrant groups. And more studies are needed that examine which elements of anti-bullying programs and intercultural education approaches are most effective in preventing and reducing bullying and victimization among different immigrant groups. Furthermore, research-based modules on interventions programs that specifically address stereotypes, prejudice and self-justification of perpetrating bullying against immigrants or ethnic groups peers need to be developed, piloted and evaluated. Intergroup contact interventions that include the promotion of intercultural friendship between youth belonging to different immigrant groups, minority and ethnic and outgroup peers need to be rigorously tested regarding their effectiveness in reducing or preventing bullying and victimization in multicultural schools. So our recommendations, the axiom of the mechanisms underlying bullying generally among immigrants and racist bias stigma-based bullying specifically, suggest the need for integrating specific actions to tackle these forms of bullying in the standard anti-bullying prevention and intervention programs. And there is a need for designing educational programs which would prevent vulnerability, vulnerability throughout the inclusion in education. Specifically, teachers should focus on what give immigrant boys experiences of affiliation. Prevention and intervention efforts should address moral disengagement mechanisms. Focus on composition of peer groups so to be a minority might be the vulnerable aspect more than having an immigrant background. Social norms regarding diversity in peer groups and classrooms should be addressed. Specific information or training programs should be developed in and implemented to inform a broader ecology of systems. Both educators, educational school psychologists, social workers and health personnel and so on. And implementation of policies to contrast the socializations through mass media and extremist groups of the deviant culture is recommendable. So to conclude, combined actions <laughs> at different levels, so both individual, interpersonal, structural and the level of community and the society, addressing different groups, critical individuals, the peer groups, adults, schools, and the family, and focusing on specific elements, improving of social skills, social competence, climate, prejudice, attitudes against immigrants, specific ethnic groups. And last but not least, stress the importance of educating children to be tolerant and respectful towards diversity. It is not the diversity it itself that is a problem, but how you relate and address diversity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the practical recommendations. So we have uh, exactly five minutes left.
So I um, don't want to waste any time to take uh, questions from the floor. So there's one question. Do we have microphones? Uh, so there's one question here. Very good. Yeah, you, oh, you also, yeah. With that. With this. Yeah, or perhaps you can. Yeah, you, your, voice is very, your voice is very loud, so we can hear you. And I was particularly struck by how you contrasted um, Olveus's findings from 1996 that the characteristics of the target aren't really implicated in the reasons mm. for bullying to what you're finding here is, is that actually um, it seems like immigrant youth are being targeted because they, they are immigrants. But I'm wondering if actually Olvers' findings from 1996 no longer hold as a global statement because what we're seeing in the United States is that there are specific groups that have very high rates of bullying. Uh, immigrant youth is one of them, but we're also seeing that students with disabilities are two to three times more likely to be targeted. Um, we're also seeing that students are targeted um, very heavily because of their sexual orientation and gender identity. UNESCO has done some great work in servicing that. So my question to you all is, is, is I'm wondering whether we need to be challenging Olvers' general statements um, in the context of what you're finding here and, and, and the other areas I'm suggesting. Thank you, Nicolas. Who wants to Maybe respond? Can I answer? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much yeah, for uh, uh, your uh, question and uh, uh, your suggestion. Um, I think that uh, the literature on uh, bullying increases a lot from the uh, uh, first statement of uh, Olveus. Olveus uh, wanted to stress the fact that uh, in bullying is not really important the characteristics of the victims, but the imbalance of power between the bully and the victim. What uh, we found uh, in uh, um, how our review of the literature about immigrants, but also looking uh, and exploring the, li the literature about other forms of uh, bias-based bullying, against, for instance, uh, disabled uh, bullying or uh, homophobic bullying and so on, the literature is showing that prejudices are really influential. So members of these groups, uh, also for uh, disabled, the disabled children, we have some few studies, at least uh, to my knowledge, showing that uh, there is a prejudicial component against these children. So they are targeted because their difference is uh, is perceived as something bad because it socialized the prejudice against these people. <clears throat> so uh, what uh, we now know probably in the literature, and I, I totally agree about the fact that uh, the literature is showing that uh, it's not only uh, having a powerful uh, status among peers uh, that uh, is influential when the target is uh, a minority group member or a member of a specific group, when uh, the society is socializing a prejudice uh, against that group. So that was, uh, I think, the, the yeah. most important. I think it's a very, very important uh, finding. We have time for another very quick question. No? No question? OK. So uh, what I want to say, just to conclude that, I mean, I'm not going to wrap up, is that UNESCO is planning to obviously use this work that has been done to publish, uh, we don't know yet exactly how it would look like, but we will publish something on this theme, because as we saw, it's too complex for people just to talk about things without exactly knowing exactly what they're talking about. So we'll do, we'll publish something. And uh, uh, I think a round of applause for the, the, the free speakers and uh, on behalf of UNESCO, really thank you for this uh, excellent uh, work. Thank you. Thank you.